Here I've got a nice problem that mixes the ideas of integer points on curves and then the floor function. So I like both of these topics quite, quite a bit, so I was excited to find this problem that mixed these two ideas. And we're actually gonna use a pretty interesting trick, and I'll give you guys a hint as to what that trick is before we dive into the solution. So we wanna suppose that we've got natural numbers A, B, and C satisfying the following quadratic equation. So A squared plus B squared plus one is equal to C squared. And then from there, we want to prove that the floor of A over two plus the floor of C over two is even. Okay, so like I said, I'm gonna give you guys some hints that you might want to use if you're trying this problem on your own. Um, so let's get those on the board. Okay, so here are our hints. This first one is fairly simple and is used a lot. But the second one is a little bit more obscure, but is still really nice to keep in mind whenever you're working with problems involving sums of perfect squares. So the first says that perfect squares are congruent to zero or one mod four. So I won't prove this, but this isn't too hard to prove. Just take an even number, square it. Notice that'll be a multiple of four. If you take an odd number and you square it, it will be one more than a multiple of four. Okay, and then our second one has to do with if a number can be written as the sum of two squares. So n can be written as the sum of two squares if and only if it has an even number of prime factors that are congruent to three mod four. So that's a little bit of a technical thing. I've proved that on the channel before. I've got a playlist involving writing things as sums of squares if you wanna look for that. Okay, so let's maybe get rid of these hints and we'll dive into the solution. If you tried the problem on your own, hopefully those hints were helpful. Now we're gonna look at a solution. Starting with the fact that perfect squares are congruent to zero or one mod four. That tells us that a squared and b squared are congruent to zero or one mod four. They may not be congruent to each other though, one of them could be congruent to zero and the other one congruent to one, just kind of depending on the setup. We'll actually show that they're both congruent to zero mod four, but we'll get to that point. And then furthermore, C squared is a perfect square. That means C squared is also congruent to zero or one mod four. Okay. But now if a squared and b squared are congruent to zero mod four, then that tells us that a squared plus b squared plus one is congruent to one, two, or three mod four. Okay, so why one, two, or three mod four? Well, let's see. This one mod four occurs when a squared and b squared are both congruent to zero mod four because we have zero plus zero plus one. That'll give us one. And then this two mod four occurs when one of them is congruent to zero and one of them is congruent to one mod four. So we've got zero plus one plus one. Okay, and then finally this case when they're congruent to three mod four occurs when both of them are congruent to one mod four. So we've got one plus one plus one. Okay, but on the other hand, C has to be congruent to zero or one mod four. So that means that these two are impossible given the other side of the equation is also a perfect square. So that means that we know a squared plus b squared plus one must be congruent to one mod four, and thus c squared must also be congruent to one mod four. So the takeaway here is that a and b are even, and c is odd. Okay, so now we can introduce some notation. That means that a is equal to two times m, b is equal to two times n, and then c is equal to two times k plus one where there we're taking natural numbers, except maybe in this case where we could have C equals one, so we could take K equals zero. Okay, so now where can we go from there? Well, let's take these 
and plug them into our green boxed equation. So I'll underline it in green to show that we're plugging them into this green boxed equation. That'll give us 4m squared plus 4n squared equals 4k squared plus 4k. And what did I do there? I took this one and I subtracted it over. So that canceled this one that we get from squaring C. And that's actually pretty nice because we can cancel the four out now. That's gonna give us M squared plus N squared is equal to K times K plus one. And then notice that K and K plus one are kind of obviously numbers that are in sequence. In other words, they are consecutive integers, which means they're relatively prime. So let's point that out. The GCD and K of K and K plus one is equal to one. So they share no prime factors. That's gonna be important as we move forward using the next um, hint. And then let's also notice how our goal is shaping up. So notice that the floor of A over two plus the floor of C over two is equal to, well, it's M plus K, right? So it's M because A over two is equal to M. And then it's K because if you divide this by two, you get K plus a half, but then taking the floor, that'll obviously give you K. So we want this thing right here to be even. But notice that occurs when both of these are either even or they are both odd. So those will be the four cases that we want to work with. So the first case would be they are both even. The maybe last case would be they are both odd. And then the mixed cases are one of them is even and then the other one is odd. Okay, so keeping that in mind, Along with this equation, with this orange fact, we can put a summary of this on the top of the next board and then finish this thing off. So on the last board, we took our given condition and broke it down into the following new setup where we had m squared plus n squared was k times k plus one, where m and n and k were related to our original numbers a, b, and c. Then we also noticed that the floor of A over two plus the floor of C over two was equal to M over K. And then that motivated bre breaking this into four distinct cases. And these are all of the four possibilities. So if we analyze all of these four, four possibilities, then we are done. So notice if M is even and K is even, then M plus K is obviously even and we're done. So we don't really need to do anything here. Likewise, if m is odd and k is odd, then m plus k is even because an odd number plus an odd number is an even number, and we're done in that case as well. So that means we need to carefully analyze these two other cases. So the first one when m is odd and k is even, and then the second one when m is even and k is odd. And a trick built into these two remaining cases is that between k and k plus one, exactly one of them is even. So that means their product is even. But that means that m and n have the same parity. So that means, in other words, m is congruent to n modulo two. So that means they're either both even or they are both odd. So if m is odd, that means n is also odd. And if M is even, that means N is also even. Okay, so now let's get started on this case right here. So M is odd and N is odd. So that tells us that M squared plus N squared is congruent to two modulo four. But then since we're assuming K is even, that means K plus one is odd. So that means K must be congruent to two mod four. Okay, again, that's because K plus one is odd. K is the even part of this. But that tells us that K plus one is congruent to three mod four. But what that means is that K plus one has an odd number of primes 
uh, of the form three mod four. If you're built out of an even number of primes that are three mod four, then all of that will cancel down and you'll have your final answer is one mod four. Okay, but then that's a problem. The GCD of K and K plus one is one. So that means this shares no primes with this. But then from there, we see that K times K plus one also has an odd number of primes dividing it that are congruent to three mod four. But let's recall that sums of two perfect squares always had an even number of primes dividing them that were congruent to three mod four. So that means that this is not possible because on the one hand, from the structure of sums of two squares, we have an even number of primes that are three mod four dividing this object. But then from this other analysis, we have an odd number of primes that are three mod four dividing this object. Okay, so again, this is not possible. So hopefully we'll have a similar result down here and this will also not be possible. Well, let's notice that if M is even and N is even, that tells us that M squared plus N squared is congruent to zero mod four. But then this, along with the fact that M squared plus N squared is K times K plus one, means that K plus one is congruent to zero mod four. So if k is odd, then k plus one has to be even. But now we can subtract one from both sides and we get k is congruent to negative one mod four or three mod four. And now we're in the same situation. So that means k, and I'll just put dot, dot, dot here, has an odd number of primes dividing it that are three mod four. But that means our product, k times k plus one, also has an odd number of primes that are dividing it that are three mod four, which means m squared plus n squared also has an odd number of primes dividing it that are congruent to three mod four. And that is not possible from the same argument that we had before. So we had these two cases, which everything worked out and we were good to go. And then the remaining cases were not possible. And so that finishes the proof of this problem. And that's a good place to stop.